Hi, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Sue, and today we're going to celebrate the bounty of summer with a wonderful, wonderful vegetarian casserole full of summer vegetables, and it's Greek, sometimes called briami, and you'll love it. It's good for you and tasty too. Just a reminder, today's recipe and all the recipes we've used on this show can be found on our website, tweetin.com. Be sure to look us up. You'll find a way to order tapes of these cooking lessons. You'll find a way to email me, and I do love to hear from people who are out there watching the show. If you have a favorite family recipe that you'd be willing to share with me, boy, I'd just love to hear from you. So please contact me, email me your favorite recipe. And on our website, you'll find other links to other Greek sites, sites that will give you more insight into the Greek culture, and of course, a lot more recipes. But on to today's special vegetable dish. Today's recipe, Briami, is a summer vegetable casserole. You could use just about any vegetable that you have in your garden during the summertime. I've got to get some things for tonight's dinner. First thing, I'm going to get some parsley. I need at least a cup. And there's plenty here for me. That should do it. Summer's just about over. And I've just got a few things left that I can pick. But I see one big fat eggplant that's got my name on it. Let me go get it. Now, isn't that a beauty? That sure is pretty. And I'm going to pick up a few tomatoes. There, these look pretty good. And I think I'll get just one small green pepper. There we go. But there are a few that are just absolutely basic and you need to have. One is you've got to have some eggplant. Whether it's homegrown like mine or you purchase it at the grocery store. You need some eggplant close to a pound. Now remember, all the quantities I'm going to give you are just approximate. If you have a little more eggplant, a little more potatoes, a little more something, it's not going to make any difference. It's just good to have something close to the quantity I'm going to be giving you today. Now in addition to eggplant, of course you need tomatoes, whether they're, again, homegrown or from the grocery store. You can use fresh tomatoes, about a pound, or you can get one of those big one pound cans of whole tomatoes or sometimes they even come sliced. You definitely need onion, one or two onions. Optional ingredients would include some green peppers, bell peppers, whether they're red, yellow, green, and some garlic. But you have to have at least one pound of potatoes. And, of course, one pound of some sort of summer squash. I've got an assortment. Here's some zucchini, some patty pan, and the last of my garden crookneck squash. But you could use an assortment like I'm doing today or just one. It doesn't really matter. And one cup of chopped parsley. Now, what do all these vegetables need to make them taste good and to make them taste Greek? olive oil. That's it. You're going to need one cup of extra virgin, very good quality olive oil. But put this all together and you'll have a delicious, delicious vegetable treat. Obviously, with all these vegetables, the biggest problem in getting this dish together is going to be all the slicing. The first thing I want to do is get to my potatoes. I'm going to put my potatoes as the bottom layer. That will make the whole casserole a little sturdier when I go to serve it up. So 
I've washed my potatoes, now all I need to do is just peel them. And as you peel the potatoes and when you're done, just check, especially the ends, to make sure there's no dark spots. Cut those things away. And these were pretty good. Okay, all done with peeling. Now I'm going to throw the peels away. Now I want to slice these potatoes about, oh, one-third to one-fourth inch thick slices. And then I'll just be layering them on the bottom of my baking sheet or baking pan. Kind of like getting potatoes ready for scallop potatoes. This is all done. This is my baking pan. It's a 13 by 9 glass pan and I'm just going to spray it very lightly on the bottom with some olive oil spray and put in my layer of potatoes. And by having the potatoes at the bottom, it'll just make the entire casserole just a little bit sturdier when it comes to serving. Because these other vegetables are going to get a little soft, they might get sort of mushy, and having the potato layer on the bottom will just make it easier for you to serve. So definitely a good layer of potatoes on the bottom. And that's about that. That's it. Okay, potatoes are all done. Now I'm going to slice up my onion. And because we're trying to keep everything in sort of slices or chunks, I don't really need to chop this. I just need to slice it. And I'm going to just cut it in half and then just slice it about oh, a quarter of an inch thick on the slices. So I'm just going to cut it in half and then start slicing. This is getting to me. I need to take an onion break. I'm going to put the onions on top of the potatoes, but I want to just very, very lightly salt the potatoes just to give every layer of vegetables a little bit of seasoning. But I don't want to overdo it because there'd be nothing worse than having everything over salted. And of course, as much pepper as you feel like. Now you can layer these vegetables in any, any order. There's no particular order. It's just nice to try to keep them in separate layers. It makes for a sort of nice, pretty presentation. And you can use more than one onion. If you have two small or medium onions, then I use the two. This was a pretty large onion, so I think I can get by with just one. But you could use more if you wanted. So I'm just layering the onions. I'm kind of breaking them up a little bit just to make sure every bit of the surface has some onion in it. Gosh, these guys are still strong and my eyes are still smarting. I have to take another onion break when I'm done with this. The onions are done. I'm going to lightly salt this layer too, very lightly. and pepper onto eggplant. 
I'm going to slice the eggplant, get rid of the little ends. And I'm going to slice it into about quarter inch rounds. If you wanted to, you could peel the eggplant. That's if you wanted to. And what else you could do is after you sliced it, you could salt both sides of all the slices and lay them down on a paper towel so that some of the moisture would be released from the eggplant. Then of course you would have to rinse the eggplant slices very well before you put them into the casserole. Well, today I'm not in the mood to do either one. Number one, I've never been an eggplant peeler. I like the purple skin and it just doesn't bother me when I run into it in a dish. And number two, I've never had a real problem with eggplant being bitter. I don't really uh, sympathize with people who say that it is. So I don't go, usually go through that step of salting it. But that is something that you can do. You can peel it and you can salt it. But I'm not going to do either one of those today. I'm just slicing my eggplants. And these are smaller eggplants because they came from my garden. It's the tail end of the summer. So this is kind of the last crop that I'm going to get. So you want to slice the eggplants oh, anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a third of an inch thick. And before I cut into another one, I'm going to just see how this layers in my casserole. Okay, I misjudged a little. Some of these slices aren't perfectly a quarter of an inch thick. And you know what? It doesn't matter. I think these two eggplant will do just fine. I'm going to cut them up so that I can fill in every crevice with the eggplant just like if you were doing a moussaka. And then just squish them in. Get every inch covered with eggplant. And give this a little dusting of salt and pepper too. However, if you have salted the eggplant, just pepper. Hey, that looks good. And I'm going to save this and fry this and make some scortalla and drive the rest of my family crazy. You could use additional vegetables. Uh, during the summer, sometimes okra is plentiful. You could throw in some trimmed and washed okra. You could throw in some trimmed and washed green beans. Uh, you could use green peppers. I'm not going to use them today. And you could throw in anywhere from two to four cloves of minced garlic. And I'm not, believe it or not, I'm not going to use the garlic today. I'm just going to stick with the basic vegetables. But another ba basic vegetable that you have to have is summer squash. So here I've got some zucchini. Now all I want to do is just cut off the ends. And I can cut it into rounds, I can cut it lengthwise, it really doesn't matter into one inch chunks. I'm going to cut it lengthwise once and then into about one inch chunks. Because squash are usually so small, it's hard to get big fat rounds unless you buy that new kind of zucchini, the round zucchini. But I wasn't willing to pay the extra money for that. All right, so I've got my zucchini chunks. And then this is actually my favorite summer squash, patty pan. Again, just cut off the ends. And 
and I'm going to cut them in slices like this. And this got a little bruised here. Okay, and slices. And I had a very nice yellow crookneck squash plant this summer. And this is, this is the last of it. No more little squashies coming out of that plant. So I'm just slicing these up. And that'll be the squash component of this vegetable casserole. And all I want to really do is just sprinkle my squash all over. You can start with these. And since this is all squash, it really doesn't matter how these are layered on. Just try to cover every surface with a little bit of squash and separate the slices or the chunks so that they're not stuck together. Make sure Every serving is going to get a couple chunks of zucchini, a couple chunks of patty pan, a couple chunks of the crookneck. However, if you're using the same squash, then it doesn't matter at all. Just layer it. Okay, that's it. We have a nice squash layer. And just be sure that you lightly salt and pepper this layer. That's it for now. I've got to peel my tomatoes. And so I have a nice big pot of boiling hot water. What I'm going to do is just make a little X with my knife at the bottom of the tomato. And then drop it in the hot water, boiling water, for about a minute. The um, Peel will get very loose and I'll be able to just zip it off. So here goes one. I need about a pound of tomatoes. Now I'm using these from my garden because I've got them. But if I didn't have them, I think I'd go with the one pound canned whole tomatoes or sliced tomatoes. Okay, wait a minute, and then I'll fish them out. It's been a minute. I'm just going to take one tomato out to make sure that they're ready to pop their skins. Look at this. Skin just wants to come off. So this is perfect. I'm going to fish out all my other tomatoes. The tomatoes are just a little too hot for me to handle, so I'm going to just start on parsley. I need about a cup of parsley, and so I'm just going to separate the leaves from the stems and chop it up. And I think I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm not going to really worry too much about exact proportions. But Greek people do love parsley with their vegetables. So 
So if I use a little more than a cup, that's not going to hurt. This is not a spicy dish. Actually, the vegetables are the stars. Okay, I'm just going to chop this up. And it can be a rough chop. It doesn't have to be very, very finely chopped. And that looks good enough for me. And I'll just sprinkle it on top of my casserole now. Okay, that's done. Now comes probably the messiest part of this, if you're using fresh tomatoes. Got to take the peel off of them and slice them. It is kind of fun though. The peel just comes right off like that. That's why the boiling water method is so, so nice. They're a little warm. I just want to remove the, uh, the stem end. And that comes off easily. And then the only thing left to do is just to slice the tomatoes about anywhere from a quarter of an inch, third of an inch to half an inch, just depending on how well they slice. And these haven't fallen apart yet because I did not leave them in the uh, boiling water too long. If you overdo it, leave it in the boiling water too long, they will get very mushy, but that's still okay. And just lay, lay them on top of your casserole. And all I want to do is just make sure every little surface of the casserole is covered with tomato. And that's, that's it. As with all the other layers, I want to just very lightly salt this tomato layer. and put a generous amount of pepper. Now if you're watching your salt intake, I wouldn't salt this at every layer, I just do it on the top. Okay, now that's really pretty. It's getting time for it to bake. What I want to add to all this to make sure all the vegetables get cooked is one cup of hot water just pour it on as evenly as I can. And then of course the star, the olive oil. One cup of olive oil. And if using that much olive oil bothers you, then of course you could cut it down to something like a half cup and pour that over evenly. This is a simple, rather plain dish. The stars are the vegetables and they're supposed to stand out. The parsley adds a nice flavor to it. If you wanted more flavor, something more than just the parsley, salt, and pepper, you could sprinkle this with any number of fresh herbs. Uh, chopped fresh basil, fresh rosemary, fresh thyme, fresh oregano. Those would add another dimension, but this is really the traditional Greek recipe, just letting the vegetables stand out. Now, cover this all with aluminum foil tightly. You want to bake the casserole in a 350 degree oven for at least an hour before you do anything. It's been an hour, and so now what I want to do is just take the casserole out of the oven and remove the foil. Now be careful. Don't burn yourself. Now this looks pretty good. 
What I want to do is put it back in the oven and let it bake for another half hour but without the covering. This will uh, get rid of some of the moisture. And if I wanted to, at this point, I could sprinkle the whole top with some buttered bread crumbs and some Parmesan cheese. Now that's not traditionally Greek, but Americans seem to like the combination of bread crumbs and cheese. So that's something you could do to make the casserole a little more attractive. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to put it back in and leave it for another half hour to cook. It's been a half hour, so it's time for me to take the casserole out of the oven, let it kind of settle for a bit, and serve it. Well, the casserole is done. I took it out after a half hour, and I let it rest, let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. And now it's ready to serve. Now, this is so good by itself. You could make it the star of an all-vegetarian meal. All you would need to do is maybe add a fresh, crisp salad and lots of bread to sop up the juices, or even something like rice. However, you could serve it as a vegetable side dish when you're having something like simple, plain broiled meats, broiled chicken, broiled fish, something like that. It really doesn't matter, but I'm going to serve some up right now. And there you have it, briami, a baked vegetable stew, just perfect for the end of summer when you're going to use up all your leftover garden vegetables. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You should have used the plate. 